Guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful Arsenio ZSL podcast. Again, if you guys are watching this on video, completely different setting, not very good lighting. It's all good, man. I just want to make sure I'm in a comfortable position and I'm away from noise. There's a lot of noise happening around here. So nonetheless, man, today, as I said, is a full lesson. And that's what we're going to be getting into straight away. So for those of you who are listening to me on my podcast, understand that this entire blog with the 10 questions is available on my website. The link is in the description, okay? Now, for everyone else who is literally watching this video and you guys are on my Patreon, you, got, you guys get this straight away in your email box, right? So that is the benefits of obviously Patreon. I hear a lot of people out there, you guys are having crazy difficulty in terms of solving some of these problems, whether it's vocabulary questions or you're trying to understand a hidden meaning or the inference questions or obviously the summary questions at the bottom. That's what we're going to be discussing. Today is a full lesson and it's about household pests. All right. So I've color coded a lot of things, especially with the the box segment that you guys are definitely going to be uh, seeing. Obviously, I've color coded that into pink, green, blue, and purple. Don't worry for everyone who's listening. I'm going to be speaking this out loud. All right. And again, for those of you who are interested, the answers, I'm, I'm contemplating whether or not I'm going to give you, you know, the answers here or there. Let's see. But it's on my blog. The goal here is not to give you the answers, but to understand how to understand, right, the paragraph and what you are looking for, right? So again, there are two pages on my blog. Second page will have the answers. Not exactly sure where I'm going to go in terms of giving you the answers, but let's just see how everything falls, right? So question number one, straight away, the word others in paragraph one refers to, I color coded it, okay? And I told you guys about these, or if I haven't already done that specific video or podcast about vocabulary questions, right? We need to understand the sentence, you know, primarily it's before, sometimes it can be after, then obviously the sentence that's in it. So what I'm going to do is recite this specific, okay, sentence out loud for all of you. It says here, and while many pests, such as cockroaches and beetles, are regarded as disgusting and unseemly on our floors and walls, comma, Others may be outright damaging and threaten the value of a homeowner's property. Two such pests are ants and termites. Have you guys seen the reading that I've done before? This is the exact same. This is exactly what TOEFL does. This is how they designed the test. I'm so excited to even recite this out loud because you guys heard me say, you heard me say, a plural countable noun twice as opposed to anything else. And that twice could be in a sentence before, in the same sentence of, as, you know, the word others and after. So again, I don't know when I did it. If you guys are watching me on YouTube, my Facebook page, or whenever you had watched me, guys, this is it right here. And while many pests such as cockroaches and beetles, are regarded as disgusting unseemly on our floors and walls. Others, what others, what other types are we talking about? Maybe damaging to a homeowner's property. Two such pests are ants and termites. Let's go to the answers. It says here, A, cockroaches and beetles. B, pests. C, floors and walls. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think floors and walls are it. And D, homeowners. And the answer here is pests. And the reason why pests are the answer is the simple fact that it was mentioned twice and that that is ultimately the reference point. It was said at the very beginning. And while many pests, such as cockroaches and beetles, Okay, and we're not talking about inanimate objects, so floors and walls are gone. We're not talking about homeowners, okay? But again, others may be outright damaging. What could be damaging? What other types of pests can be damaging? And then 
they go on in the next and in the last concluding sentence it said two such pests that's it and another form of those types of pests are of course ants and termites your answer to others are pests you guys love how i say that right pests i never used to say that before i used to just say pest right but pest is singular got to make sure i say the pests i hate it but you know what it's necessary number one's finished do you guys get what i'm saying so again i hope you understand make sure you walk yourself through this process and again, we're going into number two now which of the following can be inferred from paragraph one now you're gonna have to break this down in my crow okay because what can be inferred now let's break this down i gotta read the whole sentence out or i'm sorry the whole paragraph out for all my esl podcasters so here we go including almost 10 million species and represented over 90 percent of life on planet earth insects are ubiquitous. And while humans live peacefully side by side with most insect species, some pose a threat to human activity and habitats. You need only to consider the damage caused by insects to agricultural crops and the ramifications for food security and agricultural economies to understand their potential to wreak havoc. But it is not only the food we grow that can be threatened by insects, our homes themselves may be impacted. And while many pests, such as I've already told you guys with the beetles and the cockroaches, some can also be outright damaging to homeowners property. Two such pests are ants and termites. So let's break this down. 10 million species, 90% of life on planet Earth, insects. Okay, so we have insects are ubiquitous. That's the main topic of that first sentence. Humans live peacefully side by side with most insect species. Insect mentioned again. Some pose a threat to human activity. You need only to consider the damage caused by insects. It was mentioned again. And again, guys, this is how I'm able to follow the passage because in each sentence, insects, insects, insects. Let's continue. And the ramifications for food security and agricultural economies to understand their potential, whose potential? Insects to wreak havoc. But it's not only the food we grow that can be threatened by insects. That's four. Let's go down to the answers. So what can be inferred, okay? Insects are the worst thing imaginable. A, a majority of the world's insects cause problems to humans. Don't be fooled by this. It says including almost 10 million species and representing 90% of life on planet Earth, insects are ubiquitous. It did not say that, ni that the majority of insects wreak havoc, okay? Now, again, we live side by side. Some pose a threat to human activity and habitats. Some, okay? Some is not the majority. So A is no. Now, again, going into the next one. Insects damage to homes is, great, is a greater problem than their damage to agriculture. There was not a comparison in regards to that. Let's go back to the home. Although regarded as disgusting and unseemly on our floors and walls, others may be outright damaging and threaten the value. It threatens the value. It didn't say that it is more of a problem to homes than it is to agriculture. You see, there is no comparison made between the two. So agriculture is gone. Now insects are the most common type of animals on the planet. Out of the 10 million species, 90% of them are insects. C is your answer. But if you don't know, and you're like, well, let me check out D. Okay, cockroaches and beetles are commonly misunderstood by humans. <laughs> Does it say anything about it being misunderstood? No, they're disgusted. That's it. So here we go. But it's not only the food, blah, 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 blah. And while many pests, such as cockroaches and beetles, are regarded as disgusting and unseemly on our floors and walls, that's it. It's not, we're not confused by that. We know exactly what they are. They're a disgusting, invasive species. We're, we're not misunderstood. We're not misunderstood. It doesn't say that although they're on our floors, floors and walls, they are regarded as some of the most amazing things. No, that means that we have misunderstood it, but there is no misunderstanding here. So C is the answer. Understand how I'm breaking this down, people. 
okay? And B, there was a comparison, but there wasn't a comparison in the paragraph. The majority of the world's insects cause problems to humans. It didn't say that. It said some. C was the answer, obviously, because 90%, and it goes back to the topic and the thesis of the paragraph. Cockroaches and beetles, get the hell out of here. Let's go, people. Number three, unchecked in paragraph two. All right, so I labeled it right here. Let me say the sentence. So uh, now again, it says unchecked in paragraph two is the closest in meaning to. Now, let me break down this sentence. Ants may put their well-deserved reputation for industriousness to work on more than just your house. They are also attracted to foods in the home and left unchecked, can quickly become a terrible nuisance in the kitchen or garbage areas. Now, let's say that again. They are also attracted to foods in the home and left unchecked, can quickly become a terrible nuisance in the kitchen and garbage areas. So again, they're attracted to foods in the home, but if left unchecked, meaning if they are not if you don't contain them, they can ultimately become a problem and a terrible nuisance in the kitchen or garbage areas. You guys get what I'm saying? Left unchecked, understand that sentence, people. They are also attracted to foods in the home and if not contained, is what left unchecked means, can quickly become a terrible nuisance in the kitchen or garbage areas. Now, let's go to the answers. Unchecked, does that mean inside? Does that mean uncontrolled? Does it mean persistent or bothered? Eliminate two bad ones. Inside, no. Bothered, no. So you have B, uncontrolled, C, persistent. Type your comment in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube. Okay, if you're watching this, obviously, on my Instagram, type the comment. If not, go to my blog, check and see. First, got to make sure. Okay, is it unchecked or persistent? Arsenio broke this down because he made me understand the sentence. Now I got a 50-50 chance in terms of getting this right. So which one is it? And then you can check my blog and see which one you got right. You guys get what I'm saying? So let's keep it going. Number four, which of the following components helps to make applying, okay, the pesticides easier? Now, sometimes it's easy to find this, but again, okay, which of the following components helps to, uh, to make applying the pesticides easier? We need to look for the first mention of pesticides, okay? So here it is. I found it very, very quickly. Now, we could skim through paragraph three. And the topic sentence talks about pests, termites, okay, controlled, eradicated, toxic, all pests, biological level, more compounds, I'm sorry, most compounds, pesticide, dilutant, particulate, thickening agent, uh, and a surfactant system. The pesticide is the toxic chemical, the page, blah, 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 blah. I'm just continuing to look through, look through, look through, and I don't see anything. But first, let's go through the answers before we get that, because again, we're looking for some of these words, these vocabulary terms, and there it is. I found particulate dilutant pesticide and surfactant. Surfactant, if I pronounced it and enunciated it right. Now, Pesticides easier. Helps to make applying pesticides easier is what we're looking for, not the list. You guys may have seen, oh, I'm looking at, I'm looking here and it says pesticide, a dilutant, a particulate thickening agent. The goal is pesticides, make applying pesticides easier, something that is made easier. Okay, we need to look for the word apply. Now at the bottom, at the very, very bottom of that um of that paragraph, as a matter of fact, it says this, the particulate agent suspends the pesticide with the dilutant and the thickening agent serves to make the compound easier to apply to infested areas. Finally, the surfactant lowers the surface tension of the compound, further facilitating application. Okay, now let's look at the first couple of sentences of Paragraph number four, when it comes to pesticides, application is key. We're getting there now. More specifically, the compound must be applied in the correction, I'm sorry, in the correction, <laughs> in the correct 
location, either exterior to the home or the on the interior, exterior application, okay, of a pesticide will help to prevent future pests from entering the structure. So I'm continuing to look through all of this. Okay, applying compound outside windows, application between the walls, reach the corners, this, 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 this. What makes it easier? What makes it easier? So in this paragraph, there is nothing in regards to it making it easier. So basically, it's in paragraph number three. And what you're going to have to do is go back down to that question because this could get a little bit tricky. Which of the following components makes it applying easier? What makes it easier? So again, these compounds, most compounds, okay, thickening agent, surfacing system, the pesticide and the toxic animal chemical that kills the pest while the dilutant ensures that the compound does not endanger its human users. Still, direct exposure is not recommended. The particulate agent suspends the pesticide within the dilutant. It suspends it. And the thickening agent serves to make the compound easier to apply to infested areas. Now, the thing is, what is the thickening agent is what we have to look for. So what's the thickening agent? This is the thing. Is it the particulate, the dilutant, the pesticide itself, or the surfic, surf who cares, the surf? And let's keep going. Finally, the surfactant lowers the surface tension of the compound, further facilitating application. Further facilitating application. So when reading those last couple of sentences, people, okay? Obviously, no, not pesticide. It gets a little bit confusing. But is it the particulate that makes applying easier? The dilutant or the surf? The surfacent. I hate saying that damn word. This is going to be a good one for you. I would like you guys, with me saying everything, to type your answers in the comment section below. Let's keep it going. According to paragraph four, and now that we know that number four is in paragraph three, which of the following is true of the interior application of pesticides? Okay. The interior okay application of pesticides now remember i said everything already uh, already what is true about the interior so it says here in the second sentence it talks about it could be applied exterior to the home or on the interior exterior application it goes on for the next couple of sentences now interior application is the key and it's right here and i'm going to highlight it for everyone and I'm going to put it red for you because this is what we're looking for. What is true, okay? What is true? Now, interior application, I'm gonna recite this out loud, is meant to eliminate those pests which have already infested a home. Thus, effective pest control involves both prevention and eradication. While many homeowners choose to take the problem into their own heads by applying pesticides themselves, others choose to support, I'm sorry, choose to support the burgeoning pest control industry, higher end professionals, blah, 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 just a bunch of details. So again, exterior application of a pesticide will help to prevent future pests. Interior is meant to eliminate those pets which have already infested the home. So what is a preventative measure? One is just taken out what you see on surface, but it's not taking out the bottom of it. That's what I'm trying to convey to you guys. So thus effective pest control involves both the prevention, which is exterior, and the eradication, which is the interior. So let's go down to our answers. What is following, well, I'm sorry, which of the following is true of the interior application of pesticides? It is more dangerous than exterior application? Doesn't mention it. It helps to prevent, no, exterior helps to prevent. It is more difficult than exterior application or it is not very effective. Now, I helped you guys with A and B, you have C and D. Let me know, type your comment, go to my blog, see if it's right.
I'm trying to help you guys and I'm coaching you through this. I'm not advising you and telling you the answer. I'm coaching you through this. So now we're in the latter half of the last uh, question, six through 10. This is when it gets a little bit crazy, right? So in paragraph four, the author mentions hard to reach corners in cabinets and other furniture as an example of, now think about it, hard to reach corners, meaning places that you cannot get to, okay? Places that you can't get to. And what happens if you're not able to reach the places that you can't get to? So A, it says common points of entry for insect infestations, areas which should be avoided. No, that doesn't make any sense. Key pathways for insects within a home, possibly, or possible nesting areas for pests. So going back up to paragraph number four, it says here, uh, da, 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 da. okay, here we go. This commonly involves applying a compound to outside walls, porches, and window areas. Interior application can be more challenging since insects seek out nesting areas which are relatively inaccessible to humans. And then it goes on to say, obviously, this includes hollow spaces between walls, soft spots, beneath floors, and hard-to-reach corners in cabinets and other furniture. So I eliminated one, okay? Common points of entry, no. Areas which should be avoided when applying pesticide, it did not mention that. So you have C and D, key pathways for insects within a home or possible nesting areas for pests. I'm just breaking down these questions. It's, there's no use in telling you guys the answer, but it's, of great use to make you think like me and follow the questions like me and be able to eliminate the questions so that you come up with this and this and say, you know what, I got you. See what I mean? Now let's keep it going. Which of the following best expresses the essential information highlighted in the sentence? This is number seven. I'm gonna recite this out loud and then I'm going to speak out A, B, C, D. For those of you who are watching, bullet points one, two, three, four. <sighs> Quote, while many homeowners choose to take the problem into their own hands and apply pesticides themselves, others choose to support the burgeoning pest control industry, hiring professionals who have the knowledge and equipment to ensure that compounds are applied safely. Okay, now what we have here is it says here, what does this mean? Okay. Incorrect answer choices change the meaning in important ways or leave out essential information is the key, okay? But what best expresses the information? What expresses the information? What is being said? A, homeowners may work alongside pest control, okay? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that they're working alongside. Get the hell out of here. You've eliminated one bad answer. Bullet point number two, <laughs> what is it, two? Answer B, some homeowners choose to support the pest control industry, which hires knowledgeable and safe professionals who can assist the homeowner in applying pesticides. Okay. Assist the homeowner. Now it says here, hiring professionals who have the knowledge and equipment to ensure that compounds are applied safely. It doesn't say anything about assisting the homeowners in applying pesticides. Gotcha. C, some homeowners deal with pests on their own, but others seek professional help for a higher level of safety. <laughs> Boom. That is the answer. I'm going to tell you the answer there. Okay. Because it says here in the first sentence, while many homeowners take it in their own hands, others hire professionals. That's it. And the last question it says, or the last answer, potential answer, is even though the pest control industry is growing some people, I'm sorry, is, I'm sorry, there's no comma here, so I have to put this into a thought group. Even though the pest control industry is growing, some people do not wish to hire professionals and instead attempt to control the pest themselves. Okay, now that could be a little difficult. Some do not wish to hire professionals and instead attempt to control the pest themselves. Uh, 
control the pest themselves and it says here into their own hands and apply pest pesticides themselves i don't know if controlling pests and applying pesticides is the same thing it's very very close even though the pest control industry is growing uh let's see here uh what is it others choose to support the burgeoning pest control industry now it doesn't say anything about uh, it growing, unless I look up the vocabulary term virgin and can't really, I don't remember the definition right off the top of my head, but again, control pest and applying pesticides themselves, the information's a little bit of a contradiction, so I would stay away from that and I would go with C because it sound, it's, it's much, much closer. Sometimes you're going to get answers that are very, very close and you're going to have to choose the one that is best. Now, in paragraph number five, why does the author mention $1.5 billion in damage? Let's go up to paragraph five. It says here, global statistics are difficult to compile, but it is estimated that in the southwestern U.S. alone, termites cause approximately $1.5 billion in damage each year. The scale of the problem is such that the pesticide and pescatoro industries are growing. Ah, okay. So that would be more of a better answer, obviously, than the one that I had said before. So do you guys get what I'm saying? So why did they mention this? Why does he mention this? Let me give you some of the answers. To lend support to community-wide pest control solutions, to prove that estimating the impact of pests is difficult, to introduce the idea of natural pest control methods, <laughs> or to illustrate the extent of the problem caused by termites and ants. There you go. A, B, and C, those are terrible answers. Introduce an idea of natural pests, $1.5 billion in damage? So that's, that, that's a natural pest, $1.5 billion, billion? No. Estimating the impact of pests is difficult? No, because it's not. we're not estimating. It, it says here it causes $1.5 billion in damage. There's no estimation, and it's not difficult. It's right there. To lend support to community. Why pet that? Absolutely, absolutely not. All right. So now this is the section that I have not done yet, which I'm planning on doing coming very, very soon. But in number nine, this is the type of question that you guys would see. Examine the four boxes. I have a pink box, green, blue, and purple. In the selection below, it indicate at which block the following sentence could be inserted into the passage. So, I like this one. The following sentence, and where can it be inserted? Another natural approach involves altering the timing or pattern of lighting. Since this appears to disrupt the insect's breeding habits. So we're going from one approach to another. Why? Because it says another natural approach. So let's look at A. While biochemical solutions remain highly effective methods of pest control, there is growing opposition to the use of chemicals in and around habitation. I'm sorry, human habitation. So A, no. Because again, we're starting the sentence off after we introduce one approach and then we go into another natural approach. Okay, so B, which is green. The move toward organic food that grown without the use of pesticides or herbicides has helped to raise awareness of the potential health risk of such chemicals. No, it doesn't, no, there's no natural approach. We're, we're, we're looking for natural approach. Here we go. Thus, natural pest control relying on non I'm sorry, non-toxic methods and compounds is becoming more popular. Natural methods may utilize plants or even other insects to ward off or eliminate pests. But again, I haven't used anything in regards, I haven't heard anything in regards to a natural approach. So the last sentence, which is D, purple, it says particular plants are known to repel particular insects, for example, crushed mint leaves are touted as an effective ant deterrent, uh, deterrent. I'm sorry. Again, one is touted as an effective ant deterrent. Another natural approach involves altering the timing or pattern, pattern of lighting since this appears to disrupt the insect's breeding habits. Okay, so one way you can do it is by using 
uh, but what is it? Using crushed mint leaves. Another way is by altering the timing or pattern of lighting. <laughs> Boom. D is your answer. Why? Because what we can do is use crushed mint, mint leaves, which is one natural approach, and it is effective. Or another way is altering the timing or pattern of lighting. Do you see? So this is actually really easy because we see another natural approach. So we need to look for the first approach, which is obviously crushed mint leaves. Ah, <sighs> boy, this is crazy, right? This is nuts. So now we have the infamous summary question. I see a lot of people out there, a lot of you out there, you're like, oh my God, man, I don't really, I don't know this and that. I showed you on YouTube, I showed you on my first Facebook page, and I've showed you in the reading that you probably may have already heard if you're listening to this podcast, okay? So, an introductory sentence for a brief summary of the passage is provided below, okay, below, which is, termites and ants are pests that can damage homes by chewing through wood. We're going to have to complete the summary by selecting three answer choices that express the most important ideas of the passage the most important ideas of the passage. So I'm going to say all of these out loud. You're going to pick them apart and let me know. If not, I will do a Facebook Live so I can break this down. I'll do a YouTube Live to break this down if you guys don't get it correct. Now remember to check my blog for the answers. Now, let's go through this. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, the pest control industry is growing rapidly. Remember main ideas, okay? Not minor ideas. Most important ideas and the main ideas. Going back into it, I'll reiterate. The pest control industry is growing rapidly and pest control professionals can help ensure safe application of pesticides. B, pesticides may be applied outside the home for prevention and within the home to kill existing insects. C, pests do a lot of damage to homes every year, and some people are turning to more natural methods of pest control. D, pesticides alone have been found to be less effective than pesticides used in a combination with natural methods of pest control. E, compounds used to eliminate pests are typically comprised of several key ingredients. And F, besides damaging homes, insects cause significant damage to agricultural crops and foods. Now, again, most important ideas versus minor ideas. Go back to my reading video because I've talked about that and I've talked about that in very, very good detail, okay? So, Guys, my goodness, that is a full lesson of the TOEFL IBT reading. Again, guys, if you're interested in reading coaching and speaking coaching and writing coaching and whatever coaching, there are different price ranges for everyone out there suitable for your needs. If you are interested in getting some evaluations done and you just need some writing done or maybe a couple of coaching hours or you want to do group coaching with a friend to get a cheaper price, it's all available. Make sure you reach out to me again, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this ESL podcast or Facebook premiere or YouTube video. If you guys got any questions, let me know. I'll be waiting for them all. And until then, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm your host as always, over and out.